have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Can't be caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Can't be caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host. tonight. I want to ask you a question. How many soldiers do we have out there 
in the army of the Lord. I'm going to pose this question to you one more time. How many soldiers do we have out there in the army of the Lord? Do you have your war clothes on tonight? Amen, 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 amen. Tonight we need to know are you fighting for the Lord? Are you on the side, are you on God's side, or whose side are you on tonight? We need to know that you are fighting in the army of the Lord. Glory to God tonight. So we praise the Lord tonight, tonight, tonight. We want to give God glory. I know I went on last week, but I don't know what just happened. But listen, we give God glory tonight. We give him praise. We give him honor because he's worthy of the glory. I'm telling you tonight, he's worthy of the honor. He's worthy of the praise. I don't care what's going on in your home right now. I don't care what you had to face today. Whatever giant you face, I came to let you know that giants do fall. Come on here. I don't care how big they are. I don't care what they look like. Giants do fall. So don't you be afraid of your giant. Sometimes, people of God, you have to face your giants head on. Sometimes you have to face your giant head on. Do you hear what I'm telling you tonight? So listen, we want to honor the Lord. We bless the Lord for this this um occasion tonight. Amen. For allowing us to be with you once yet again on a Tuesday night. We give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. So at this time, I want you to go call your friends, call a neighbor, uh, put them on three-way. I don't care how you have to get them. Reach them. Reach out to them. Send them a text. Let them know that Apostle Dr. Sylvia Hunter from Forever Flowing Ministries in Mobile, Alabama, is on the line tonight. Glory to God. And I came tonight with a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. So we want to go ahead and shout out the Elations family tonight. We give them praise. Y'all put your hands together for them. Amen. We want to put our hands together for Dr. Kimmy Kim. Hallelujah. Because she makes all these things possible for us to do what we do. We love her. We appreciate we appreciate God for her. We thank God for her life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I thank God tonight for each and every one of you that have joined me tonight to hear a word from the Lord. I ask you tonight, are you in the army of the Lord? It is so important tonight to know what side you're on. Whose side are you leaning on? The songwriter said, I'm leaning on the Lord's side. I want to know, are you leaning on the Lord's side tonight? Glory to God. And if you're not leaning on the Lord's side, switch partners. Come on. Come on over on this side. We welcome you tonight. We want to give you welcome. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for allowing us yet again to get together. Father, we ask tonight that you move by your spirit, move by your power, move by your might. Father, I thank you for everyone that is under the sound of my voice and those that will come back and listen by replay. Hallelujah. We just thank you tonight, God, for them. Father, we thank you for being such a good father. Father, we just thank you for being who you are in our lives tonight. We take authority tonight over these airwaves. Father, God, we thank you tonight that there be no interruption, that there be no interference in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you tonight, God. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor in your son Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. Hallelujah. To be in the land among the living. Let me say that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It could have been me outdoors. Could have been could have been me with no shoes, no clothes, no food. But listen, God said, no, you won't be just another number. Hallelujah. He says, I'm not going to allow those things to be. And by his power, he keeps on keeping me. He keeps on stirring me. He keeps on waking me up, even though sometimes, you know, you don't feel like doing anything. But there's a, something on the inside that's telling me to go ahead. And I thank God for the push. I thank God for the Holy Ghost tonight. I thank God for the Holy Ghost power that's pushing us to do what we need to do. I thank God for Jesus. Come on here. Hallelujah. For it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. Where would we be tonight? So we thank God. We honor him tonight. Tonight. Hallelujah. For this, t- tonight is 
It's such a, 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 you know, the night is, the weather is raining some parts where I am. It has been storming, amen. There's been a little lightning going on, but I still take authority over the airlines that we will get through this broadcast without any interference. I just thank the Lord tonight, hallelujah, for what he's doing on this line, amen. What he's doing with this broadcast, the radio broadcast as a whole. God is using his men and women of God to get out information, amen, to build people, to help people. Amen. We're here to do a work. We were sent by God to do a work, and I came to do my part. Everybody has a part to play. And so until you complete your day, you should always ask God to help you carry out your assignment for the day. Don't try to go into tomorrow's assignment. The Bible says don't give thought for tomorrow because tomorrow will take care of itself. Tomorrow's going to have his own issues. It's going to have her own cares. It's going to have a lot of things that's going on. So you need to finish today. Come on, somebody say, I'm going to finish strong. Amen. So finish every assignment today. Make sure you've dotted every I. Make sure you've crossed every T or whatever else you need to do. Make sure every paperwork is complete. Make sure you've read the fine print. Make sure you don't try to cross out nobody. Make sure you don't try to X out nobody. Amen. Make sure you do right by people. Make sure you love people. Make sure you try to help somebody. Make sure you're not lying on nobody. Make sure you're not trying to ruin nobody's reputation. Make sure you're not uh, showing discord among the brethren. Make sure you're being fair with people. I said a whole lot of stuff, right? Yes, I said it because it needs to be said. Amen. We are a, a body of believers. We are a, we should be kingdom citizens. And on this side of, of heaven, we shouldn't be trying to cross out our sisters and our brothers. Amen. We should buy, We should be helping everybody that we can. We should be advancing the kingdom of heaven, right? Amen. Hallelujah. So we got to do our part. Amen. And if don't nobody wants you to do your part and they're trying to get in your way, if you don't like what I'm doing, you call go to God because only God can fix me. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank him tonight. We thank the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank him. So many killings, senseless killings are going on around us. Uh, you see so many Young people now are getting murdered, but I'm not, uh, it doesn't surprise me because my assignment, one of my assignments is to cover the male seed. And every morning I, you know, we pray for children from the age of eight to 22, 24. They, they, it's been designed for the enemy to have them in prison or some behind some system where they are behind bars or they're in protective custody until, I won't even say protected because they don't even protect them anymore, until they get to a certain age. They're away from their families. That is the design. The enemy has designed it to be to, to take our African-American male out of the home, African-American fathers out of the home, put them in a penal system so that they the wives are left there by themselves with no help. Come on. Well, she would have to rely on the government to help her to raise her children. See, that is, a, that is this has been in play forever. This is nothing new under the sun. Amen. Hallelujah. This is nothing new under the sun. But tonight, <clears throat> we thank God and we're yet praying for the male seed to get back in position. And see, in the beginning in Eden, God gave man dominion and power. Come on, somebody. So therefore, we have to pray that our male seed get it together. We have to pray that they uh, remember who God created them to be, that somehow they lost it, somehow Something happened. They got in a bad relationship. They got rejected at an early age. Things happened in their early childhood that caused them to, to grow up to be to be men beaters, I mean women beaters, to, to always have a conflict with women, a problems with women, or always had to be the big, uh, look like you the big man on the totem pole, like you, you had it all together when really you was faking it till you made it. Come on here. So we want God men to get back in position, not to fake it till you make it, but make it. Show these young boys how they can be successful entrepreneurs. They could be successful in whatever they put their minds to. Amen. And make a decent, honest living. Come on here. Our forefathers, they worked for what they wanted. Amen. And so there's nothing wrong with putting in some elbow grease. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So tonight, I have been compelled, amen, to, to, to invite you to continue to pray for our male seed. Amen. Also, we binding up uh, 
uh, um, uh, sex trafficking with our young women. Amen. Hallelujah. They don't discriminate now. They, they, you know, they normally get kids. Amen. They get children. Hallelujah. They start them out having sex at the age of three. They're fond of them, them, them. They're teaching them how to go down on a man. Amen. Because, and the way they use the methods that they use is keeping them from having food. They keep them from eating for a certain period of timing. And when they begin to give them a little food, it's just very little. Not enough to get full. Not a lo- just enough to get put the taste in their mouth. And then they begin them uh, uh, on, you know, liquids. And then and it's like they, be- they begin to show them, practice them how to drink a suck out of a bottle. Amen. They, 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 it's all about teaching them how to, uh, 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 to have sex at an early age with a man that, that, that God never ordained. Amen. For their young lives. And so this has been in place for a long time. And so just because you don't hear about it as much as certain areas, at certain months, listen, don't you stop praying against sex trafficking because it's yet going on. And it's yet going on in certain places, especially where there is a seaport, meaning that if your state or where you live has a lot of water uh, uh, ports, where people can come in, ships are going in and out. That's one of the easiest ways for your children to be missing. You think your children dead. They're not dead. They done got them through the seaport and done put them on a boat, and they're gone somewhere over into another country. Amen. But I'm telling you, we're praying that God will allow his people to go in there uh, uh, un- unannounced, uh, to talk to the women and snatch them out and the children. See, but there are so many women who have been there for years that so they have grown accustomed to now they live there. They even bro- bro- bear children there, and their children, they're raising their children in a brothel. I'm telling you, it's sad, but it's true. So we got to continue to pray against these things. Sex has been a, 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 a hot commodity forever, amen? But even in the Bible days, sex was a hot commodity, amen? But, you know, if all for you to marry a man if you uh, were found not to be a virgin you were stoned come on here a man when he went into his wife for the first time she was supposed to be a virgin and if she was not a virgin they could stone they the man would have to tell the family would be there waiting to get the answer from the husband whether or not the wife was a virgin the family did not leave out of the the wherever they had the the uh, celebration, if it was at the whichever parents' house, they stayed there till the man went into his wife. Once he came out, he would give them tell the fathers yes she was a virgin or no. If they he said no, then they would stone her because she would have lied and she would have brought shame to her family. Y'all read it; it's in the book. Go to the book. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So today we just want to keep praying for those that are trying to even uh, come up against those. We want to come up against it. We want to stop it. We want to annihilate the work of darkness, even when they come up wanting to take our women's organs and put them in men. There was a man on Facebook this week, I guess, or last week, where he had the first child, but he looked like a man, but guess what? He was a woman all the time. Come on here, somebody. People better stop playing with God, because listen, I don't care if you do put a woman's reproductive system in a man. It's not going to work because it wasn't designed to work. I don't care how many mad scientists you get. It's going to cost money, 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 money in order for that to work, and they're going to come into a lot of complications. Amen. Amen. Why are you trying to do something that God never ordained? People of God, when you get these in these marriages, and you have not stood before a priest, you not stood before a pastor, you not stood before somebody who's licensed to marry you, your marriage is illegal. If you marry a woman and that is not the way God ordained it, it's illegal. If two men are marrying, if God didn't ordain it, you are marrying it, 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 it's illegal. And it's out of bounds for you. Glory to God. Some people are scared to say it. It's just the truth. Amen. Glory to God. We ain't bashing anybody, but the truth is just the truth anyhow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How can a man and a man uh, re, uh, procreate? They can't. They need a female or the female organs to carry up the baby for them. Come on. That's why they, they you know, look for surrogates. Let's, be, let's, let's use your brains now. Amen. Two women can't have a baby. They will need the male seed, come on somebody, in order to enter into the woman, in order for her to carry the baby. So that was never God's intent. 
Hallelujah. Lord God said for man and woman to marry so that they can be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Amen, light. Amen, water. Amen, rain. I'll speak to the rain because I needed the rain. Glory to God. So tonight, I'm going to leave y'all alone because I see y'all getting mighty quiet on me. I feel you. I may not see you, but I feel you. You're getting like, oh, Lord, where's she going? That's all right. Don't worry about where I'm going. Just know that it was never intended for two of the, the same sex to marry. Amen. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody scared but y'all. Come on, somebody. Tonight, we're talking about your connection. Hallelujah. We want you to ask yourself tonight, who are you connected to? Glory to God. Who are you connected to? Is your connections producing what you want them to produce? Amen. Sometimes you get connected to a man huh, that don't even want a woman. He want another man. Is he producing what you want him to produce? No, because he's looking at another man. He ain't looking at you. So how can he be producing what you want him to produce? What is God saying tonight about your connection? Mm-hmm. Do, your, um, do your connection seem faulty or malfunction? Hallelujah. And I want to know tonight, how did you get connected? I'm going to give you a definition of connection. Connection is a relationship in which a person, thing, or idea is linked or associated with something else. Let me read it again. Connection is a relationship in which a person, thing, or idea is linked or associated with something else. Amen. We go on to the word of the Lord. I'm coming back to that just for you. Amen. Tonight we're going, if you got your Bible, let's go to First Samuel, the 18th chapter. Hallelujah. I'm just going to read five verses. And I'm coming out of two different Bibles. Amen. First Samuel, the 18th chapter. Just, I'm just giving you a little, uh, uh, just talking about a little connections. And I'm getting ready to read. First Samuel, the 18th chapter, the first verse. And it reads, and it came to pass. When he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Hallelujah. Amen. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle. And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servant. Amen. I've read to you the first uh, first Samuel 18 chapter the first and the fifth verse. Let me go into something else. We're talking about connections. Amen. By the time David had finished reporting to Saul, Jonathan was deeply impressed with David. An immediate bond was forged between them. He became totally committed to David. From what point on, he would be David's number one advocate and friend. Saul received David unto his own household that day, no more to return to the home of his father. Jonathan, out of the deep love for David, made a covenant with him. He formalized it with solemn gifts, his own royal robe and weapons, weapons, armor, sword, bow, and belt. Whether Saul gave David to do, well, I'm sorry, whatever Saul gave David to do, he did it and did it well. So well that Saul put him in charge of his military operation. Everybody, both the people in general and Saul's servants, approved of, of and admired David's leadership. David was admired all at, at, even at an early age. Come on, somebody. By the, by the king, by the son of the king. My God. So we didn't heard several words here. We didn't heard a word where it begins to say that um, over here that uh, how Jonathan loved him that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. Amen. You heard it said that Jonathan and David made a covenant, all right? You also heard me say something about being 
totally committed. Jonathan was totally committed to David. Now, when we talk about commitment and covenant and, and knit it, knit it together jointly, that's something you think about with your spouse. Come on here. You don't think that a woman and oh Lord have mercy, don't help. We don't think that two men can be joint and fit and and, and uh <laughs> You don't think that they could be committed and 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 <laughs> you don't think that they could be uh, a covenant like this? Yes, yeah. You know, looking at it from from certain people's perspective because you're not looking at it through the eyes of God. I see what you're saying, but through looking at it through the eyes of God, they can very well be committed. Two men can very well be committed to each other as in a bond, as friends, as friends, as friends only. Two men can very well be in a a covenant relationship because God has been saying to me that he's given us covenant relationship, covenant, meaning that the bond is so tight, meaning that it's like a marriage. When a husband and wife is, has a covenant relationship, they are bound together. They're bound not only by law, but they're bound in, 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 in relationship. They're bound by commitment. They're bound uh, uh, by friendship. They're bound in love. They're, they're, they're also ownership. They have ownership of each other because they have taken on each other's name. So, but here it is. You see these two brothers, two men that become brothers. Amen. Uh, David being uh, 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 one of the youngest sons of his father have now become Jonathan's best friend. They are knitted together. They're growing up together. You see them and you keep reading how they're growing up together. They will grow up together in the palace. Come on, somebody. Amen. Until... Uh, Saul gets mad because of the accolades that the people began to give David, and then David has to return home. But here now they are, um, they are pray. Uh, you know Saul is pleased with David. He has made him over his whole military. You gonna make a child over your military? Glory to God. Here it is though. But they these this this relationship that they have was coveted. Amen. Uh, he treated him like a brother. He shared his clothes, the best of the best. See one thing I love about when you're a covenant. You want to make sure that if I'm in a covenant relationship with you, I want to make sure you're good. I don't care if you if you ain't got it. If you don't have it, if you need it, I got it. Whatever you ain't got, I got it. Whatever I don't have, you got. We are there together. We're for each other. We won't lack because we're there. We're, we're in a committed relationship. Listen, sister, you are my sister. You are my kingdom sister for life. And we and I'm going to always be there for you. We're covenant. I, I'm going to be with you for the long haul. I'm not going to abandon you. I'm not just going to be in your life for a season, but I will be there for Ever, amen, as long as we both shall live. That's a covenant relationship, a covenant bond. I'm going to be your big sister. I'm going to be your little sister. Or you're going to be my big brother. Or I'm going to be, you're going to be my little brother. See, you got to ride and live with people like that. Come on, somebody. I ain't talking about doing negative things with people uh, or y'all in the club and you want to fight. No, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about living or uh, having a wholesome life, enjoying life, enjoying the birds, as they say, Tweedledee. Tweet of Dom, watching the crickets as they're cricking, as you hear the noises that they make, looking at the sky that turns blue and how it turns cloudy, watching, just enjoying the beach, just going to the movies, going out to eat with some more friends with child of covenant. You may be short that week, but your covenant brother or your covenant sister have your back. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Glory to God. This was a covenant. So they were connected. They were connected even though they was not born by the same father. Come on here. They had two different daddies. But guess what? You couldn't have told because of the way that Jonathan loved David. He loved them. They, not only that, they loved each other. Let's be real. Amen? But it wasn't no kinky dinky stuff like that. No. This was a genuine love between two men, two young men at that. But show me two young men that ain't trying to fight each other, that ain't trying to kill each other. So many young people, all they do, they doing the police job for them. They killing each other for senseless stuff because somebody don't like the other one's tennis shoes because somebody wish they had the tennis shoes. Y'all going to let Jordan take all of your life. Jordan getting all of your money, and he taking, and y'all going to the grave over a pair of tennis shoes. Come on here, somebody. You ought to create your own tennis shoes while you're dying over somebody named Michael Jordan. T- Nike tennis shoes. Come on here. My God, it's sad. We fighting over some joy. 
daughters. What? Wait a minute. He done made a name for himself. Y'all ain't even got out of high school, and you killing each other over a pair of tennis shoes. My God, senseless stuff. Y'all, pansy, that's the thing. You shouldn't even be trying to buy the shoes. You shouldn't be standing in those lines and, and, and for hours, for 24 hours, then you stay uh, for overnight, and then you still got to be in the line 24 more hours before you can get in the store for your children to pay our and they don't even know their ABCs, one, two, three. Come on here, somebody. They don't even know. They still hooked on phonics, but yet you're in line to pay two and three hundred dollars for a pair of shoes. Your priorities are wrong. Hallelujah. I said what I said. Your priorities are wrong. I don't care if you can't afford it. Your priorities still are wrong. you buying a $300 pair of shoes for a child that can't even walk. The devil is a liar. Put them on some hard bottom shoes like we did back in the old days. Keep them old tennis shoes off their feet because they're going to make their feet bad. You'll thank me later. You don't see kids growing up like I dress my kids with hard bottoms. My grandbaby, she going to have on them hard bottoms. I, y- y- y'all don't dress kids like that no more. Y'all think that's obsolete. It ain't obsolete. They, I guarantee you their foot don't be hurting. They feet will, they can be, they are able to stand up and walk rather than putting on some tennis shoes and they trying to, and the tennis shoes so heavy, it's knocking them out. Listen, people, where are our priorities? Teach your children how to save three hundred dollars and go buy them a pair. Go buy them a pair of shoes, tennis shoes on sale. Then you will see. Uh, uh, you will see something. Listen, I'm telling you. Tell your kids it's all right. Let them go on out there and beat themselves up getting those shoes. I'm not gonna buy a pair of Jordans. I never bought my son a pair of Jordans. Never bought my gr- and I ain't gonna buy him. I refuse. Now my 19 year old, she will buy her siblings. Her 14-year-old sister and 13-year-old brother, she buys the tennis shoes. That's on her. She work and do it. That's fine. But mother and father, we ain't doing it. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. I'm I'm still with Ked back in the day. Uh Uh-huh. I'm trying to remember the tennis shoes, the Nike, the the not the expensive ones, the ones you can wear for track, the ones you can wear to walk in. Listen here. You can get you some sketches. You can get you some. I'm telling you, there are some good brand shoes. That you can get a uh, new balance. Come on here. That you can work in, walk in, or whatever. But y'all trying to spend three hundred dollars on a pair of shoes, and then talking about, oh, I can't walk. I gotta walk a certain way so that I don't get a crease in them. The devil is a lie. If I gotta do all that to to, to keep a shoe, then I don't need it. Come on, somebody. Y'all, Lord, help me, Jesus. Let me get back on connection. Hallelujah. Get connection again is a relationship in which a person, thing, or idea is linked or associated with something else, all right? The connections between um, social attitudes and productivity. There's a divine connection, right? Uh, Divine connections, they come from God. They're strategically placed in your life, amen. Often refer uh, to uh, divine connections, uh, sometimes divine appointments or divine connections. It means relating to or proceeding directly from God. And connections means to link, join, bond, or association. They are designed by God to help bring you to a uh, uh, a a past or a promise or a future event that is preordained. Throughout the Bible, God has divine connections, a covenant collects connections, covenant relationships, such as what we just talked about, Jonathan. And David, David and Jonathan, Ruth and Naomi, Elijah and Elisha, Paul and Timothy, to bring people into their destiny. Divine opportunities, divine connections can represent new connections. How many of you know that there sometimes you have been in with people for so long to now you're acting like them, to now you you have become them, to now when people see you, they know who you are. They're like, oh, Lord, do with that old group of people. Mm-mm. You know, they got their nose all turned up and everything. It is because sometimes you are connecting to people based off of their status quo, based off of their uh, notoriety or uh, how much money they make and how much money they have or, or their their family name. You are connecting to people because of what they have, and you're not allowing God to give you the divine connections. Oftentimes, we want to be accepted, and in our being accepted, we were willing to lower our self-standards, our morals, our values, our principles to be with people that God never ordained for us to even associate with. You are lowering your standards to be amongst people that does not even listen. While you trying to fit in with them, baby, they're not even worthy to be a part 
out of your circle, but because you don't realize it, you are stupid. You are aiming low, hallelujah, to be accepted in something that they don't even know where you're coming from. They don't even understand you, but they are accept you because you want to be in their group. They'll use you because they need some new flunkies. They'll work you because they need to see what you're willing to do for their friendship, their connections. They won't give you the connections. They'll let you be a part of them. And, and they'll be bragging, and they'll be, you'll be seeing all these wealthy people, all these people coming from different various walks of life, and you just need one, one, one signature. You need one, one signature. You need one door to just open for you, and they won't open it, even though you you're connected to them, they won't open it because you're beneath them. But listen, the moment that somebody see you and you rise up and you on their level, hell breaks loose. They're not going to let you be on their level without a fight. They're going to try to take you out. They're going to try to sabotage what you're doing. They are, they are now from coming to be your connections or your divine connections. They are now your the saboteur. They're trying to sabotage your destiny. They're trying to sabotage your purpose. They don't care nothing about what you got going on. They just want you to fail. Even if they have to take you out of here, they're willing to do it because they will not allow you to come out being a part of their uh, group and you rise above them. The devil is a liar. They don't, no, they're not going to allow that. They will fight you tooth and nail. And I mean literally fight you. And I'm talking about they will go low. When I'm telling you low, they will go low because that's the kind of people that they are. They may look good. They may wear the best. They may be in the upper echelon. But when it comes to you getting a part of their cake or their pie, they will do whatever it takes to get you up out of that group, even if they have to have somebody to take you up out of here. You got to know what kind of connections you're dealing with, baby. You got to know if your connections are the wiring is faulty or is it a connection that God gave you or told you to be a part of, or is it something that you're trying to be, you want to be seen, so you going on and you trying to get connected and you done got connected with the wrong one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now you over here looking like you're lost because you with somebody and and they they are not who they made, they are made up to be. They are not who, who they say that they are. You've been bamboozled. Now you done got hoodwinked, uh huh. And now you 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 want to figure out what can you do? You 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 try to uh, scratch your head because now you're not with the elite, honey. You with the haves and the have not. And if you ain't got, you won't be in. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you gotta know today that your connections are a God, your connections are a God connection. You gotta know today that God is saying these are the people that you need to associate yourself with. I'm telling you, you better keep your circle small. And not only that, everybody need a prophet in their circle. Amen. You need a prophet. I'm a prophet, and I still need one in my circle. Amen. Hallelujah. So whatever I miss, they catch. Amen. That's how it should be. Glory to God. You need a prophet in your circle. Don't let nobody tell you that you don't. Glory to God. And we thank the Lord. Amen. We're still talking about connections tonight. Hallelujah. There are some connections that will open up opportunities for you. You know, you can get connected with some people and they can open up platforms. They can introduce you to people that can help advance you. Amen. You, they can help get you ready, prepare for what is your next, for what God is saying. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 what, it, you know, what's to happen, what's to take place. Now there, um, the opportunity, opportunity rarely, uh, comes packaged the way you expect. Y'all better know that. There are some times that you are connected with people just for a season. You know, I don't like the seasonal people. I'm going to just be, be honest. Because, see, what happens to me is being that people come in my life for a season, that means I, I, I give them information. I teach and train, equip, equip help them how to operate, help them to advance, help them to, to obtain, help them to get wealth, help them to have knowledge and all of this. And then as soon as I do, I begin to work with them. And so, so they seem like they're coming up a little bit. Then the season is over. They're ready to go. Some, they're ready to leave and call it quits. 
And then you say, well, did God tell you to leave? No, God ain't told me to leave. What you leaving for? You that's still more you need to learn. Sometimes people think that they're too good for you anyway. They just want to see what you what you know. And sometimes people will hang on your coattail just for your knowledge. But I'm going to tell you that there are some people who will pay you for your knowledge. I, I'm telling you, the work that you can do, there will people will pay you top dollar for what you know, for how you, how you do what you do. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you what I know. Amen. Glory to God. Not that you're trying to sell yourself because, no, it, your work will speak for you. It should speak for you. And if your work can't represent what you're producing, then you need to stop working and get yourself together because something ain't right. The work that you do should, should speak for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so um, the connections tonight, we just want to make sure, check your connections. Make sure they that they are good connections. Make sure that the people that you're connected to are reputable. Everybody is uh, going to have something to say negative about everybody. But what you need to do is go in with your eyes open and be. don't j- base your relationship off of what somebody else says concerning that person. Get to know the people for yourself. Amen. Get to know them for your oneself because people lie all the time. And people will try to keep you from your, uh, because see what you fail to realize is the person that God is trying to yoke, yoke you up with could very well have your destiny in their hand. They could very well have your deliverance in their hand. But because somebody else don't want you to be free, they'll talk down that person. They'll talk down that group. They'll talk down them people. They'll talk down that ministry so that you don't go. And then you will miss out on the bed, the opportunity that, that don't come around a lot. Amen. And so I'm telling you, get to know people for yourself. Don't base a book by its cover. You must read the entire book. You get, sometimes you get um, uh, uh, books and they say a word, they spell out a word, but those acronyms and and, and all of that, acronyms and, and stuff, by the time you realize what they're saying, you listen here, you done messed up. So open the book, read it for yourself. Just don't base it because you're looking at it and, and it looks like a woman in a red dress with red lipstick. Come on, open that book and read it. Find out if she's a, a harlot or not. Yeah, she may not even be a harlot. It's just what's the, something to catch your eye. You got to realize Satan is, uh, you know, he's always trying to get you and throw you off guard. You got and try to distract you. So you got to be open to the, uh, to the connections that God is trying to bring into your life. In this season of your life, stop saying, I just want to be a seasonal person. Because seasonal person really don't get the full benefit. They do not. Because if you're seasonal, that means you may be three months. Come on, somebody. That means you may be six months. And you can't get everything in six months. Everything you need can't come in six months. Now, if, if if over a period of time you've been praying to God for so many things, yes, it can come in six months. But I'm talking about when the God is giving you uh, connections. You can't learn them. And you can't learn everything in six months, especially when they are loaded with lots and lots of information that you need. It takes time. It takes time to build a relationship. You can't build a relationship in three months and think you know everything, think you know the people that well. No, 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 no. You don't go in thinking, you know, thinking of you thinking for them now. You, you know, you don't do that. You go in and you show yourself friendly. If you want a friend, you must first show yourself to be friendly. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're talking about connections. I don't want y'all messing up the best thing that God has have uh, for you. Amen. Glory to God. And we thank the Lord. We give him praise. Amen. Don't y'all go in, go in with your eyes open, but go in wanting to be a blessing and want to be, and wanting God and letting God use you. Amen. So that uh, you can get what you need from him and that you will get what he has for you. God has great things in store for his people. I'm telling you, there's so much God want to show you. There's so much he want to pour into you. But we got to open up our minds. We got to open up our hearts to receive God. A lot of you are closed minded because you got hurt by somebody. You've been rejected by somebody and you just care that you wearing it in your heart and your feelings. You are in your feelings. Ain't nobody going to be my friend. I don't need nobody. You a uh, ma'am, sir, you are not an island. You need somebody. Hey, yes, ma'am, you need somebody. God never ordained for us to, uh, to be alone. He never ordained for us to, to have to carry burdens alone. He will allow you to share with somebody who has your solution. He will allow you to talk to somebody who has the the uh, the solution to your problem, who has the, the patience to live Listen to you, and then the uh, the empathy and the sympathy to, to emphasize or the to have sympathy for what you're going through, and they have the respect for you to tell you the truth, Amen, and walk you through it, be there for you while you're going through it, love you through it, Amen, and that's what you need in this hour. You don't need no more enemies. You got plenty of them. 
Some of you say you don't have them. Well, that's a good thing if you think that way. But just to show, if you tell her the truth, if you're a person of truth, you got them. If, but now, if you're a liar, you yeah, you probably don't have them like that. They they may be mad with you because you lie a lot. But if you got if you're a person that stands for truth, you preach truth, you pipe truth, you tell truth, then people are gonna hate you. Amen. It's just a known fact. But we bless the Lord tonight for the word of the Lord. We closing the book. Amen. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. I hope that you have been blessed by the word tonight. We just want to talk about connections. And God has given us godly connections. Not just godly connections, kingdom connections. Kingdom connections. Hallelujah. Where there are some of us where we have corporate connections. We will have corporate connections with people in corporate places, uh, uh, people in high places. We will have connections with them. Amen. We will sit at the table, amen, elbow to elbow, with some of the greatest, wealthiest people of all times. Amen. And we may not even have $100,000 in the bank, but guess what? It don't matter because what we know is worth what more than what they have. Come on. If they ain't got Jesus, what if we have is more than everything that they'll ever have. Y'all better hear me tonight. There are a lot of rich people that are unhappy. They're unhappy. They got all the money, but they don't have Jesus and they ain't got no happiness. Come on. And I know people, some of us may not have with some hundreds of th- or a thousand, a couple of thousand in the bank, but we got Jesus and we're the happiest people that you ever want to see because we got the main ingredients. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord tonight. So right now, everybody, for those of you that are on the phone lines, we're getting ready to open up our phone lines. We ask that when uh, we open them up that you guys speak at one time. Once I've acknowledged the caller, I want you to... Uh, um, just put your phone on mute so that I can give them a chance to speak and I can hear them and I can minister to them. Amen. And as soon as I'm finished, amen, that you can speak. Amen. But we want to be courteous to everybody. Amen. So that we all can hear. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. And at this time, we're getting ready to open up the phone lines tonight. Amen. amen. Caller, you're on the air. Apostle, this is Sister Shakoy. I just want to say I enjoyed your message, and I love you, and um, thank you for that message because godly connections are good connections. Amen. Amen. We thank you tonight, woman of God. Let the people know where you're chiming in from. What city and state? I'm in San Antonio, Texas. And this Praise is the truly- Lord, honey. Truly a woman after God's own heart, and so I am connected, and I'm grateful to God for the connection because you're all the way in Alabama, but that just goes to show that when God connects you to somebody, there's nothing that the enemy can do to stop it. Amen. God bless you. We're so happy to have you on with us tonight. This is your first time, but it won't be your last time. Amen. I believe God. Hallelujah. So let me pray for you, Father. I thank you tonight for your daughter. Oh God, I thank you tonight. Oh God, that you are lifting her up, that you are encouraging her. Oh God, Father, I thank you for what you're doing for her and her family. Father, I thank you for the prophet that's in her belly. Father God, keep them covered. Oh God, hallelujah. We thank you. Oh God, that all things are working together for their good. Father, we thank you right now that you are holding them up with your right hand of righteousness. Father, we thank you. We praise you for their lives, Father, that there that there'll be nothing lacking, missing, or broken in their lives. So, Father, we thank you for pouring out your spirit upon them. Father, we thank you that you love them and you are concerned about everything that pertains to them. Sooner or later, later or sooner, is getting ready to turn in your favor because he's working it out for you. So we thank God for you tonight. Amen for listening in. We bless the Lord. We love you guys. And listen, hope to see you in the morning. Amen. At the six o'clock hour. You have a Amen. good night. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you for calling. Yes, ma'am. God bless you. Caller, you're on the air. My Amen. name is Charles. And I'm calling, I'm a resident of New Haven, Connecticut, but I'm calling from Wallingford, Tuesday. And I enjoy the word tonight on connection, but we all need to be connected. And we all need to get connection. This is, it is the Lord. Amen. Listen, man of God, hold on a minute. Can I get you to turn your background noise off so I can hear you? Hey, Stuart, 
TV down a little bit. Amen. Is this uh, the man of God? You said Charles, Charles, right? Yeah. Man of God, where you been? We've been missing you. I, um, I, um, well, this, well, I, well, I thought I had been calling you. I don't know. I've been missing Tuesday night. You know, we've been praying for you. How you been doing? Ah, uh, well, God has been good. He's been blessing. He, he's he's uh, working it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, uh, what's the latest? Amen. What is the latest? Well, I'm laying here paralyzed. Um... And, you know, but paralyzing is not my, being paralyzed is not my focus. Uh, Being a part of the kingdom of God is my focus. Amen. 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 You're in New Haven, right? Well, I'm a resident of New Haven, but right now I'm in Wallingford. Okay, because I would have been in New Haven last week, uh, but my father passed, and so I wasn't able. I had to cancel uh, the trip. I was going to minister in um, Bridgeport, but then I was going to come over with my friends in New Haven. Uh, but I, I need to, you need to uh, inbox me your information. I have um, kingdom sisters and brothers in New Haven. I want to send them over there to uh to take look after you for me. Just send me your information uh, in my inbox uh, because we are Facebook friends, and and so that I can send that to them, and um, you know, and so that they can come in and minister with you, and you can, you know, and, and y'all can, you know, do what y'all do and let God have His way. You know, I do have outlets where I can send people, you know, different places. But I'm thankful to God tonight that you are in the kingdom of God. You are his son. Amen. You are a son of God. Father, I thank you now for his faith. I thank you now, oh God, for his courage, for his patience. Oh God, because God, he's patient tonight. Father, he loves you, oh God, and he knows that you love him. So, Father, I thank you for accepting him as your son. Father God, I thank you now for endowing him with power from on high. Lord God, I thank you tonight for giving him your spirit. Father, let your spirit continue to reside over him. Oh, God, I thank you that your spirit is overshadowing him, and it will overtake him in the name of Jesus. Father, God, I thank you for uh, his willingness to be a servant, oh, God. So, Lord, help him serve your people in the name of Jesus. Father, God, I thank you, oh, God, tonight. Hallelujah. We praise you tonight for him, oh, God. We praise you for his life, oh, God. Father, God, I thank you for what you're doing in his life. And even though he's paralyzed right now, that is not his conclusion. Oh, God, the story has not even been told. Father God, I thank you that you're going to even raise him up to do great exploits in the kingdom. And we give you praise for it tonight. We give you honor. We give you glory. In Jesus' matchless name, amen and amen. We bless the Lord for you tonight, brother. Make sure you reach out to me, okay? God bless you. Yes, I will. All right. Love you. Thank you for calling in. Love you more. All right, now, God bless you. Let's look at Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank God for him tonight. Amen. A man. I thank God for a man, man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Caller, you're on the air. Caller, you're on hey, the Mama, air. I'm calling in from Houston, Texas. This right now. I want to say great Houston, word on Texas tonight. Houston, Texas in the house. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Houston, Texas is in the house. San Antonio, Texas, come on. New York, I mean, New Haven, Connecticut, come on. I'm waiting on New York. Amen. I thank God for you, woman of God. It is such a blessing, amen, to see God uh, 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 just taking, removing the cloud. The storm is passing now. The storm is over now, woman of God. The storm is over now. Mm -hmm. You can rejoice. The storm is over now. You stood the test. 
Yeah. You walked through Amen. it, but guess what? You came out on the other side. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. You can Amen. see the storm lifting up. You see the clouds just rolling back. Hallelujah. Where the enemy would try, thought he was going to keep you your head hung low. But let me tell you something. When a person has God on the inside, ain't nothing the devil can do with them. Eventually, when we come to the realization of who we are in God, honey, we shine, we shine, we shine. So let God continue to shine through you. Continue to be happy. I love the you that I'm used to. This is you. I love it. I love it. I love it. You keep being bubbly. Keep letting God just, you know, just make you happy. That's what he want to do. He want to make you happy. And blessed means to be made happy by God. And so that's what blessed means. And so you are blessed tonight. And we thank God for it. We thank God for your family. We thank God for your children. We thank God for everything that he is doing in your life in this hour. And mostly for bringing you back around. I thank God for it. Yes. You can Amen. stay on the winning side. Yes, Mom. Love you. I love you. Love you more. Have a good one. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being on tonight. Hallelujah. And we thank God. We thank God. And we thank God. Amen, Carla. We got just a couple more minutes. And I'm going to be out of here. Come on, Carla. You're on the air. I know that there are some of you who like to listen, just listen. Amen. It's okay to listen. But it may, amen. It's okay to speak too. Sometimes, sometimes it's just good to say hi. Amen. It's just good. Sometimes it's just good to say, listen. I was listening. I'm one of the ones that was listening. Amen. Just tell me what city and state you're calling in from, and then let God do what He's gonna do. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, caller. You're on the air. Do y'all know how many people wish they did have an opportunity to speak to me on the air or on on the phone? Come on here. You on the air. <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, Apostle Hannah. How you doing? Hey, hey me- woman of God. Yes, ma'am. How are you tonight? I am wonderful. I just didn't want Mississippi to get left out. So All right. Now y'all better it. represent. I enjoy the word on tonight, connection. That means a whole lot for you to have somebody that you can truly be connected to, and you ain't got to look over your back for nothing. You got that connection. And in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We thank God for you tonight. I know you're smiling. I see what God is doing. I'm telling you, listen, it's evident. It's evident that God is blessing you. It's evident that you are a daughter of Zion. It is evident that you are part of the kingdom. It is evident, even though sometimes the devil try to throw you a curveball, but come on here when you wake up in the morning, you give him two black eyes. Come on here. You ain't playing with no demons. Come on here. You putting him to, you putting him to flight. Y'all got to stop Amen. being wimpy and scared and stop uh, running Amen. from the devil, honey. You should be making him run from you every time the Lord Amen. allow you to get up. He ought to be saying, Amen. who woke them up? Huh? God yes. woke us yes. up. Come on here. We came yes, to run Lord. up. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Don't let me get started. I feel like shouting. I feel like running Amen. all over again because I see God and what he's doing for his people. See, if y'all don't, see, you don't know all the hell some people had to go through to get to where they are. You don't know you wasn't there. You don't know what they experienced. You don't know the hard times that they yes. have been through. And now God is yes. bringing them out into their wealth and place. Yes. I say yes. hallelujah. Yes. To the Lamb of God. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. So I, I rejoice when people are rejoicing. I cry yes. when they cry. And I, I'm a baby too. I cry too. Glory to God. But now I'm rejoicing because I'm seeing God. He's paying them back. He's paying them back. He's giving restitution. It's payback time. It's payback time. You didn't get weary. It's payback time. Y'all didn't throw in the towel. So God getting ready to pay you back. For all the lost times, for the sleepless nights, for the hurt, the soul, God, the things that the enemy that took you through, how he draws you through it. He publicly humiliated some of you. God said it's payback time. Pay us back, God, with interest. Y'all don't hear that. I won't mind with interest and the spoil. I'm taking it all, everything. And what y'all don't want, I'll take yours too. Hallelujah. Woman God, I thank you for your loyal support. I thank God. 
for you. We appreciate you and our, uh, our, our Mississippi campus. Amen. We thank God yeah. for such a woman as you. Amen. A woman that's raising up raising up people. You kidding them straight. You letting yes, them know God. hell is real. You letting them know they need the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I thank God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. That you yes. you're on the battlefield for the Lord and you won't turn back now. So we give God praise tonight. Thank you so much Amen. for calling in and tuning in tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll talk to you Hallelujah. later. God bless you now. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Now listen, people of God. I got one more minute and you better come on now if you want to say anything or I'm going to be up out of here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Call you on the air. Well, we praise God for those of you that came on tonight. We praise God for those that were listening tonight. We just give God praise. We give him glory because he alone is worthy. Listen, it has been real. It's been real. Y'all continue to pray for my family as we put later rest my father on Saturday. Continue to pray for us. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. We thank God for you, Dr. Kimmy Kim. Hallelujah. And the Elations family, the Elations magazine, the Elations billboards, the Elations uh, uh, financial group. The Ela- oh, Lord, help me. Help me, Jesus. But anyway, on Until next Tuesday night, hallelujah, it's been real. God bless you. May he keep you is my prayer. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom.
Say, Lord, I need your love. Say, Lord, I need your love. Say, Lord, I need your love. 